during the usage of any software it is very important to know the function of different mouse buttons in case of icm cfd there are two modes namely dynamic weaving mode and selection mode the function of every mouse button is different in these two modes during dynamic weaving mode one can rotate translate or zoom the model using different mouse buttons in this case the mouse cursor is always an arrow and mouse action is always click and drag in this mode left click rotates the model and middle click translates the model in a graphics window depending on the mouse motion the function of right click is decided in case of right click and up and down motion of a mouse the model is zoomed in or out in case of a right click and sideways movement of the mouse the model is rotated about a axis going in the screen if the mouse has a wheel button the wheel rotation can also do zoom in or out operation the function of all three buttons are different in case of a selection mode the selection mode is automatically activated during any operation which needs entity selection to activate the selection mode let me activate delete surface command to do that first i'll remove the display of mesh from the graphics display by just unchecking the checkbox in front of mesh i'll expand the geometry model tree and activate the surfaces now you can see only surfaces in the graphics display now the delete surface command is present under geometry function tab i'll activate the delete surface if auto pick mode is on you will directly enter into a selection mode in case of a selection mode mouse looks like a cross hair once you enter into a selection mode you can notice two things first that the selection toolbar is opened in the graphics display and second that some message at the bottom of graphics display is shown the selection toolbar helps you to do a entity selection in a very effective manner the message which is shown at the bottom of the graphics display shows the usage of the mouse buttons in case of a selection mode left button selects the entities and right button unselects the entities in case if many entities are selected the right click unselects the latest selected entity you can always select more than one entity just by creating a box with left click and drag i'll cancel all the selection simply by clicking cancel selection button in a selection toolbar i'll activate the selection mode again select few surfaces in case of a selection mode the middle click acts as a apply button so to summarize there are two modes namely dynamic weaving mode and selection mode the left button in dynamic mode is a rotate middle is a pan and right is either a zoom in zoom out or a rotate in case of a selection mode left is a select right is unselect and middle is a apply button in many cases we need to toggle between dynamic mode and selection mode for example let's say i want to delete the surface first i'll select this surface and the second surface which i want to delete is present at the back side of this model now in selection mode i cannot rotate the model so to rotate the model i have to go to the dynamic mode that can be done by either using this button which is toggle dynamic button if you notice in a bracket the short key is provided which is function f9 so i'll toggle to a dynamic mode first now i can always rotate the model get to the view which will help me to select the surface again i'll go to the selection mode select the surface and then middle click to apply now let's have a look at the details of individual ui component the first component is the main menu which is located at the top of the ui it gives access to file edit view info settings as well as a help menu file menu allows us to take the data in or out of icm cfd the first five options are related to the project file it will allow you to create a new project open the existing project save the project save the project with different name or close the existing project change working directory allows us to set the project directory for project under consideration in this case i have created a project directory named intro to icm cfd i'm selecting that as my working directory now let me open a sample project by using file open project i'll select demo duck.prj file which is a project file this project at the time of saving 
contains the data of geometry, mesh and blocking. If you see accordingly, the model tree is populated. The individual files can be accessed by using the buttons like geometry, mesh and blocking. If you go to geometry button, it gives you the option of opening the geometry, saving the geometry, saving the geometry with different file name, saving only the visible geometry or geometry content in the part. These options are very useful if you want to save a part of a geometry in one particular tin file. Similarly, the options in mesh allows you to operate on the mesh file independently. Options in blocking allows you to open or close the blocking independently. If the CAD model is created using different CAD softwares, we can use various options provided in import geometry to import the geometry in ICM CFD. The most regularly used option is importing a neutral file like step and IGS. If you click on this button, then it will ask you to select a respective step and IGS file. Once you select a step or IGS file, then it will automatically convert that data into ICM CFD geometry file, which is a TIN file. By using replace script button, we can always play the script which is nothing but a command file for ICM CFD to do a specific functions. Edit menu has undo and redo button. These buttons are also present in utility icons. It also has a buttons which will allow you to convert a faceted geometry information into mesh or a mesh information into a faceted geometry. View menu gives access to various views of the model displayed in a graphics window. It has various views like top, bottom, left, right, front and isometric. You can also use a box zoom to zoom in to the particular area of the model. You can always use fit to window to fit the model in current graphics display. The fit to window button is also available in a utility icon. You can always use the display triad to orient the model perpendicular to particular axis. Info menu gives access to various geometrical as well as mesh entity information. If you click on geometry info, all the geometrical information is displayed in a message window. It includes the number of surfaces, the number of curves and number of points available in the current model. It also gives information about how many parts are present. Similarly, you can always get the surface area, the frontal area, curve length as well as a curve direction of a particular geometrical entity. Mesh info, element info and node info gives information about the mesh entities present in the model. If you click on mesh info, it gives information about how many surface elements as well as how many volume elements are present in the model. The toolbox opens the toolbox which contains calculator, notepad as well as inbuilt unit converter. Settings menu gives access to various settings used in ICM CFD. For example, in general setting, one can always select whether to save geometry, mesh or a blocking file at the time of emergency crash. The product settings gives access to various versions of ICM CFD available. The other settings like the background style, the uh, background display, the selection mode, as well as mouse bindings can be accessed using this settings menu. Help menu has access to a various help manuals available with the default installation of ICM CFD. This help menu also contains the tutorial manual which contains various tutorials on geometry, blocking as well as unstructured mesh generation. The utility icons located below main menu gives quick access to various functions frequently used in ICM CFD. It has open project as well as a save project button located on the top. Few of the button has a downward triangle located at the right bottom corner of the button. This indicates the presence of hidden submenus which can be activated by clicking on the downward triangle and activating the respective function. The utility icon has a buttons related to geometry which allows us to open the geometry, save the geometry or close the geometry. Similarly, it has a functions accessible which can open the mesh, save the mesh or close the mesh. Similarly, the blocking buttons are also accessible through utility icons. The fit to window button allows us to fit the display of a model in a graphics window. The box zoom allows us to zoom in to the particular area of the model. Various measurement tools located in the second row allows us to measure the distance, angle as well as coordinate of the point. The local coordinate system button allows us to create various local coordinate systems which are useful in case of a complicated model. 
we do have a refresh button which refreshes the view displayed in a graphics window. The recompute mesh button allows us to recompute the mesh which is typically used in case of a multi-block structured meshing. Undo redo buttons are present in a utility icons which allows us to undo or redo the operation. As far as ICMCFD is concerned, there are n number of undos that you can do provided that the project is not saved. Once the project is saved, the history of all the operations will be removed. You can display the wireframe as well as the solid view of a model using these two buttons. Various levels of wireframe as well as a solid displays are available. These options are useful in case when the model is complicated. Now let's have a look at various function tabs present in ICMCFD. The number of function tabs present here depends on the version of product that you have activated. In this case, we have activated CFD version with blocking. That is why you can see geometry, mesh, blocking, edit mesh and output tabs only. Various functions arranged under a geometry function tabs allows us to either create a geometry in ICMCFD or repair the geometry which is imported from outside. It has create point, create curve as well as create surface functions. One can always create a body point or a material point using this function. ICMCFD has a various functionalities related to faceted geometries which can be accessed using this function. Many geometry repairing tools are arranged under this button which is repair geometry. You can always transform, rotate or translate the model using this button. Any entity which is not permanently deleted, you can always restore it back in the model. These are various buttons which allows us to delete the geometry. Various functions necessary for creating unstructured mesh is arranged under a meshing function tab. It has global mesh setup, the mesh setup based on the parts, the mesh setup for particular surfaces as well as curves. Using density button, we can always define the coarsening or refinement of a grid in particular area. The compute mesh allows us to create the mesh with specified parameters. All the functions necessary for creating a multi-block structured mesh are arranged under blocking function tab. It has buttons like create block, split block, merge the vertices, define the association, transform the block, define the pre-mesh parameters, check the quality, check the blocking or delete the blocking. We'll have a look at the details of all these functions during our multi-block structured meshing lecture. ICMCFD is one of the best tool around for repairing the mesh and improving its quality. It has various automatic as well as manual repair operations. All these functions are arranged under edit mesh tab. It contains functions like creating the elements manually, extruding the mesh along a particular direction, checking the mesh for various problems and repairing it, checking the quality of the mesh, smoothening the mesh, transforming and repairing the mesh. It has many other options which are mainly used at the time of improvement of the grid quality. We'll have a look at details of every function during our edit mesh lecture. ICMCFD supports large number of structural as well as CFD solvers. The mesh generated in ICMCFD can be taken to these solvers using functions arranged under output function tab. You can select the solver of your choice, specify the boundary condition and write the necessary input file for that particular solver. The model tree present on the left allows us to control various components of the model displayed in a graphics display. The number of trees present in a model tree depends on the data available in the project. In this case, as geometry, mesh and blocking data is present, the respective trees are populated. Various subcomponents of the tree can be accessed by using the plus sign. The checkbox present in front of every subcomponent allows us to control the view of the entities present under the subcomponent. We can always check or uncheck the subcomponent to hide or display the respective entities. Using the right mouse click, one can always access the various functions which can be used on the entities present under the subcomponent. In this case, we can always display the transparent view of the surface or a wireframe view of the surface. If the tetra size is defined on any of the surface, we can always activate the preview of the same just to check whether size of the mesh we have provided is appropriate or not. Please go ahead and right click on any of the subcomponent of the model tree and find what are the functions available for respective entities. Part model tree is a very critical in ICMCFD. One individual part can contain the geometry 
as well as mesh entities the colors of the label displayed in a part model tree are similar to the colors of the entities rendered in the graphics display we can right click on a part model tree to access various functions available we can create the new part we can create the assembly we can hide few of the parts we can delete the empty parts we can reassign the colors for different entities present in the part the graphics display present at the bottom of the ui contains various messages given by icm cfd as well as answers to the queries raised by the user for example let's say if i want to know the surface area of a particular surface the respective information is provided in the message window we can always clear the log as well as save this file for our future reference various histograms are opened in this area the most important histogram for us is a quality histogram in case of a multi block structured meshing the quality of the mesh is generally checked at the pre mesh level so the histogram of pre mesh quality is generated by using pre mesh quality histogram button present under a blocking function tab in case of unstructured meshing the quality of the mesh is generally checked after generating the unstructured mesh that is done by using a display mesh quality button present under edit mesh function tab let's generate the quality histogram to do that i'll click on display mesh quality button it will ask for various options like what type of elements you want to include in this quality check and what is your quality criteria you can always select various quality criteria as present for time being let me select quality itself as a quality criteria and i'll say apply depending on the cell count it will take some time to generate the histogram x axis of the histogram is divided into different ranges of the quality selected and the y axis contains the number of element present in a respective quality range generally in most of the quality criteria zero represents the worst element and one represents the best element you can always activate the respective bar to see the number of elements present currently we don't see any element here that is because the number of elements presents are only 5 so we have to zoom in to the particular level to do that let me deactivate the shell mesh and use fit to screen button now if you see these are the elements which has a quality in the range of 0.3 to 0.35 and there are five such elements present just to check the location of these elements in overall geometry i'll go and activate curves in the geometry so you can see where exactly these elements are present in overall geometry right click on any of the bar gives access to various functions which can be used on the mesh elements present in that quality criteria we'll discuss more about the usage of these functions during our edit mesh lecture so this is the overview of icm cfd ui to summarize various components of ui are arranged in line with data as well as workflow in icm cfd the first task one will do is create a working directory and select that as the project working directory create a new project import the geometry or create the geometry in icm cfd in case of unstructured meshing use various functions provided under meshing function tab in case of multi block structured meshing use various functions provided under blocking function tab once the mesh is generated either by unstructured method or by structured method and if it has any quality problems that can be edited and repaired by using various functions provided in edit function tab once the final mesh is generated appropriate solver is selected and a respective boundary conditions are given the mesh is then exported with all this information in a specified solver format now let's have a look at overall process flow in icm cfd the first step is to create a suitable directory structure and select it as a working directory of the project in typical case the geometry generated using a standard cad software and exported in a neutral file formats like igs or step this file is then imported in icm cfd using various translators and a respective tin file is generated due to various import and export issues the geometry needs to be repaired in icm cfd large number of geometry repair tools are available which can be used to create a clean and watertight domain necessary for meshing it is always a good practice to create a parts before generating any mesh 
After creating parts, there are two parts for generating grid. One includes unstructured meshing methods and other it includes using multi-block structured meshing methods. Now let's have a look at process flow in case of a structured multi-block grid generation method. The process flow till creation of parts is same in both unstructured as well as a structured mesh generation path. This includes creating the project directory and select it as a working directory, creating the geometry or importing the geometry, repairing the geometry, doing appropriate cleanup and setting up the parts. After finalizing the geometry in case of a multi-block structured mesh, the block topology is created using various block generation split and block delete operations. Once the correct block topology is generated, the block entities are assigned to the geometry entities which defines its projection. The pre-mesh quality is then checked with appropriate number of nodes on the edges of the block. If the quality does not satisfy the specified criteria, the pre-mesh quality improvement is done using either different block topology or alignment of a block vertices with each other. After finalizing the mesh, mesh is then projected on the geometry. After creating a final mesh, appropriate solver is selected and necessary boundary conditions and solver setup is done. That mesh is then exported to a solver for respective run. So this is all about ICM CFD UI and overall process flow in ICM CFD. At the end of the lecture, I strongly suggest you to go through ANSYS ICM CFD UI and its various components. During the process, you can always take help of tooltips and dynamically linked help pages. This will help you to get comfortable with the UI and locate the necessary functions easily. In the next lecture, we will discuss various geometry creation and repair operations.